Okay, welcome back to another video. As you may know, or you might have noticed already, I actually got myself a tripod. Hooray for me! Big round of applause! Yeah, I, I, I literally, I was so lazy, I, it, you can see the box back there, I even, I just got this for $15 at Target, so, but it's basically just like my old tripod, except it's just different branding, so, really not much to say there. Let me adjust the camera, that looks a little lopsided. That's better, okay. Anyways, what we have here is another eBay find. This is a laptop that you may have seen on V Westlife's channel. Uh, this was an HP Pavilion DV5000 from around 2005 or 6. And honestly, if I could have afforded this back then, even though I was only 9 years old in 06, I probably would have been happy with something like this. Now, the only problem is it's HP, and we all know how, what I think about HP products. But this one is actually built a little bit better than most HP computers, so we're going to give it a chance. I bought this untested on eBay, and because um, it did not come with a power adapter, but as you can see, I do have a power adapter that will work with this laptop. I have not booted it up. I don't. The seller did not know if it had a hard drive or RAM. I did um, check. I did look inside, and there was a hard drive and there was RAM. So. Um, I don't know why the seller just didn't open the, just didn't use a Phillips screwdriver because there's easy access doors on the bottom, but whatever. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a tour of the laptop and then we'll go ahead and see if this thing works. So I'll move this up to the camera a little bit. There's the front. All you can, all there is on the front are the indicator lights and the Altec Lansing speaker logo. On the right hand side we have TRS jacks for headphone in and microphone out. A remote control, yes this had a remote control that you could use to play DVDs or even control the laptop with. A single USB 2.0 port, DVD RW drive, 56K fax modem, DC power input. On the left hand side we have 15 pin VGA out, S video output, Fast 10100 Ethernet, a proprietary port for a docking station connector, two broken USB 2.0 ports. Yeah, they're, it's missing the little plastic piece. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, the camera's... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Yeah, it's missing the little plastic piece. So those USB ports probably don't work. IEEE 1394 Firewire. SD and M memory, I believe that's Memory Stick Pro, yep, and also MMC and SM card slot, uh, all-in-one card slot. And then, of course, I believe this is either Express Card or, you know, this is PCMCIA. I can tell by the slot blank that's in there that that's PCMCIA. Yeah. And props to anyone who knows what PCMCIA stands for. I'll just tell you. Personal Computer Memory Card International Association. That's what you have to know if you take the A-plus test. Anyways, we're not here to talk about CompTIA, though. We're here to talk about the computer. So, uh, let's go ahead and move this up. Let's, let me, I'm going to plug in the power. Just to, I'm going to plug in the, the AC adapter just to see what we get. Um, I'm not sure if the battery holds a charge or not. Now, we don't have an indicator light, so either the battery is fully charged or this computer has a bad motherboard. I hope this computer's okay. Oh, wow, and I almost forgot to give a tour of the inside. So before we actually boot this up, let me go ahead and just show what we got here. So I'll just use the tripod. I just want, I'm too lazy to take the camera off the tripod. So we got a nice 10 keyless design keyboard here. Surprisingly, the keycaps are not very worn at all. There's a little bit of wear on some of them, but not terrible, unlike the touchpad, which has quite a bit of wear on it, especially the left mouse button. I don't know how well you can see that. AMD Turian 64 Mobile CPU, Windows XP, graphics by ATI Radeon Express 200M, and LightScribe. Yep, that allowed you to write, um, basically make your own CD labels and DVD labels. You got the power button, you got media controls, Wi-Fi on-off switch. 
looks like about a 15 inch display and it even says widescreen on the top let me get the camera fixed here but yeah you can see up there it even says if the camera will focus they even advertise that this was a widescreen laptop which was quite a which was quite a a nice thing to have back when back in the mid 2000s when this was new anyways go ahead and adjust the camera here we'll zoom in and we'll see if this thing will boot the camera is not focusing but let's see if I if I turn it on let me just see if it okay well it powered up so either the, ba the battery's probably no good let me hit um, F10 for setup let's go into setup here let's see now the camera still won't focus alright hold on I'm gonna see if I can get the camera to focus here there is no manual focus on this camera so Maybe it's picking up a lot of dirt on the screen. Let me see if I can wipe it down. Just use my hand and see if I can wipe it down a little bit. Try turning the brightness up and see if that helps. Okay, the brightness is up all the way. There we go. Okay. That's the best I'm going to get it. Looks like date and time are correct, so it looks like this probably has a working CMOS battery. 512 megs of RAM, AMD Turian 64. Looks like we have 128 megs of video RAM. Uh, thankfully no passwords have been set. Let's see if it'll boot into anything. I'm almost Let's see. Is there an OS on here? Looks like there might be. Yep, Windows XP Professional. With no service packs. Or it's before Service Pack 2. It's either RTM or Service Pack 1, because judging by that boot screen. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I was almost expecting it to tell me that Windows had to be activated before I could log in. Zoom in a little bit more on that. Surprised it's even activated. We got our NIC driver. Oh, is the battery fully charged? I did leave this on the I did leave this on the charger. Yep, battery is fully charged. We'll test it out in just a minute here. Let's go into system properties and see what we got. Although now it's reporting one gigabyte of RAM. Hold on. Registered to unknown robot. Yeah, this is XP RTM. There's no service packs installed. Well, we're not going to be keeping it at XPRTM, obviously. We're going to be putting Media Center Edition on here, because that's what the COA on the bottom is for. Um, yeah, now it's reporting a gigabyte of RAM, so maybe we have some bad RAM in there, or the RAM's not seated properly. Go ahead and go into MS Info 32 here and, and take a look at that. Pause if you want to read that. Take a look at some of our components. We'll go CD-ROM first and just see what kind of optical drive. Looks like we got a DVD drive in there. What do we have for display? Nothing. Because there's no drivers installed. Well, let me, you know what? Let me go to Device Manager. Yeah, well, it looks like someone's already been in Device Manager. <laughs> yeah, we are missing quite a few drivers and I just spit all over the camera. Yeah, we are missing literally almost every driver. Why did they put XP RTM on here? Is there even anything? No, there's there's just the this is just a very base install of Windows XP. How big is the hard drive? I think it was 80 gigs when I looked at it. Yep, 80 gigs. So zoom out so you can Yeah, that's wow. Okay. Well, it's pretty standard Windows XP install. Um, so, you know what, I think it's time to give this machine a nice 
beautiful reformat. So what we're going to do in the next part of this video, which we'll, I'll combine it into one video for your viewing pleasure, is we're going to go ahead and use this Dell reinstallation disk for Windows XP Media Center Edition 05 and we're going to install it on this computer and hopefully the COA, the product key on the COA should work with this copy of XP. If it doesn't, I do have a plan to crack activate it because you know, crack activation. I don't think Microsoft is going to care about me crack activating XP, at, you know, eight years after its end of, well, is it even been eight years? I mean, it's been like, what, 10, 9, 8, 7, okay, seven years after its end of life. You can tell I'm great at math. But yeah, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get this CD in the drive, and let's see if this machine will boot from it. So, back in a flash. Okay, we're at the boot menu. Got our Dell, I'm holding it upside down, but I've got our Dell reinstallation CD for Windows XP Media Center Edition. And hopefully this does have the SATA drivers because this, this disc came with a Dell Inspiron E1505, which used a SATA hard drive. So, hopefully this has the SATA drivers and we Windows will it will be able to recognize the hard drive. Okay, looks like the disk looks like the optical drive works because it's prompting me to press any key to boot from the CD. Zoom in a little bit on that. And the camera is not focusing again. What is with this camera? I mean I guess I have to stay zoomed out. The problem with this camera is there's no manual focus, so it's all autofocus. Try zooming out all the way. There we go. It probably maybe it's because of my reflection in the on the glossy display there. Well, let's see what Windows reports cuz Usually if it doesn't find any hard drives it'll fail it'll it'll crash right after this um loading the files. I do know that um I do know that th that this I, I didn't see any option in the BIOS to switch it from SATA to AHCI so hopefully this disk contains SATA drivers hopefully if if it doesn't though I do have a plan. What I'll do is if it doesn't have the SATA drivers is I'll rip the CD onto one of my PC laptops and then what I'll do is I'll use Enlight to slipstream the SATA drivers for this laptop or maybe just generic SATA drivers and we'll see if that gets if, if that satisfies Windows. Alright, moment of truth here. Is it gonna screw up? Is it going to give me the BSOD? Is it going to say no hard drives? Let's see. Welcome to setup. Okay. I believe if it didn't detect any hard drives, it would have failed by now. So, yeah, set up Windows XP, press enter. Yeah, it, it definitely got past it. So we'll go ahead and totally read that EULA. Okay, and it wants to... It says we already have an installation of XP Pro. We will not be repairing that. Yep, there's our partition, so it definitely, de it definitely detects the drive. Perfect. It's a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. Okay. Uh, delete, enter, L. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, what is this partition? Is this the utility partition? I'm going to leave that on. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, well, 204 megabytes, 203 megabytes free. Yeah, you know what? I'll nuke it because it probably isn't anything important. So we're going to do NTFS quick. Let's set up format the drive. There wasn't any data on here. To, I, I, there wasn't any data on here. Off camera, I did go through the My Documents folder and all the you know folders in Windows, and there was no data on here, which doesn't surprise me because you know the um, doesn't surprise me because the um, um, you know the, it looked like a fresh install of XP Pro, but we want Media Center Edition on here because. 
This laptop's sole unique draw was the fact that it has the media remote and a COA for XP Media Center edition, so we'll see what happens. And I believe this disk includes Service Pack 2. We should be able to see it in the file copy process down there. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pause the video here and I will come back when we are at the GUI portion of setup. Alright, so that took about 10 minutes. It's at 97% copying files. So, and I did check, this disk includes Service Pack 2. Also off camera, I took, I, 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 off camera, I took note of the uh, Ethernet adapter in here and put it onto this flash drive here. So, that way, because what I plan to do is um, to install the drivers because Obviously, HP, unfortunately, no longer provides drivers for this computer anymore on their website. I tried putting in the uh, product or service tag, and it could not find it. So, what I did was, fortunately, the network driver was installed on the old XP installation. So, what I did was I just Googled that driver and went to Realtek's website, downloaded it, and put it on a flash drive. So, once we have the NIC driver installed we can then just use snappy driver installer to get the rest of the drivers because obviously it would be a lot more it's going to be it'll be a lot easier to download and install um or do it, to just do it all through snappy driver rather than having to you know go online and get all the drivers so and there we go. Well, just like that, we have made it to the GUI portion of setup. Now, I don't remember if this will ask for a product key. It probably will. But if it does, I do have a key. Well, we can try the key on the COA. I believe this computer's COA is for Service Pack 2, which is what this disk contains. That's why I chose to use this disk, because, you know, it's Service Pack 2 and it's period correct for this laptop. Um, but if it does not ask for a product key, then what I'll do is when we go to activate windows, we will change the product key from, because this is probably using a Dell OEM key, which probably won't work on an HP laptop. Um, so what we'll do is we'll use the key that's on this, on the bottom of this laptop to activate. And if, my guess is it's probably not going to work, but if it does, I will... Pro I will probably bring demo uh, democracy will be brought to no I'm kidding I was gonna say democracy will be brought to Cuba but I was quoting South Park there a really old episode from season four <laughs> so yeah how how many how many times have you seen this screen when install how many times have you seen this screen on this channel actually probably not that not that many times because. I haven't actually installed XP in a really long time. Most of the time it's uh, either Windows Vista or later, so... And actually this computer does have a 64-bit CPU because the 64, as the name would imply... Hold on. I have to take a call. Yep, I'm recording this during work, so of course I had to take a call. Alright, let me go ahead and type my name in here. In fact, I'll put my full name. And we'll put Northeast Mac. And it looks like it does not require a product key. That's good. We'll leave the default there. Go ahead and type in an administrator password. We are in, the time is correct, we are in the Eastern Time Zone. It did not ask me for a product key, okay. So, yeah, I was going to say, most Dell OEM CDs don't prompt you for a key, but I have had some that, I, I think I had one in all my experience using Dell OEM Restore CDs for Windows XP, the only one of them ever prompted me for a product key. And even then, I, I just used the key on the COA and it worked perfectly fine, so...
Installing network. Now this will be interesting because if this does have the driver for my NIC, it should ask me what kind of network I have and if I want to join a domain or not. We're not going to join this to the... Well, actually, I was going to say this is an interesting thing about Windows XP Media Center Edition. Unlike XP Professional, um, Media Center Edition... Hey, hey, look at that. It actually is asking me what kind of network I have. So maybe I don't need that, that NIC... Looks like it got the NIC driver automatically. Yeah, we'll go ahead and make it a member of the work group work group. But one, of the, one thing that's interesting about Windows XP Media Center Edition is that Media Center Edition can only be joined to a domain during the setup. So if I wanted to join this to the domain, to my, my domain controller, what I would have to do is I would have had to plug in my Ethernet cable and I would have had to, you know, have it plugged into my modem so that it, it could, you know, see the, the DC and then I could provide it with the information needed to join the domain. I don't plan on putting this on the domains, and I'm not, I, I w wouldn't want to anyways, because it's XP. I mean, XP hasn't been patched, and it would, that would be suicide for security to join an XP machine to the domain. So that's obviously not going to happen. Although I, at some point, I was thinking about doing something similar to what like the Nostalgia Mall did, where you have like an old Windows NT4 or Windows 2K domain controller, and you can you can still you can make a you can do a local network and join them to the domain without actually going on the internet. So I might look into that later on. Anyways, looks like it's copying over the files, so we'll let it do that, and I'll come back when this is close to done. So see you guys then. Okay, so it took about 30 minutes, but looks like it got past the um, main meat and potatoes portion of setup as you saw in the video it actually did detect the network driver so that saves me time because that means all I have to do is plug in my flash drive here with snappy driver installer and then I can install all the drivers through there alright we'll go ahead and let Windows adjust the screen resolution I guess I actually have to click OK instead of hitting enter <sighs> But first I want to see if Windows will even activate on here because we do need to um, change the key. So let's see what we got here. We've got no audio drivers, so we don't get to hear the um, title.wma. We'll turn on automatic updates. Checking my internet connectivity. We will skip that. We will not register with Microsoft. Type in my name. There we go. All right, yeah. If it had if it had the drivers for the audio, I would have left the uh, I would have let you hear the welcome music. But since we have no audio drivers, we don't we can't listen to it. But that's what Snappy Driver Installer is for. But first, I want to see if Windows will even activate and then we'll get to installing the drivers. So while we're at it, let me grab my phone here. Now this is not, this, I know this is probably not a good idea. You know what, no, you know what, I'm not going to do it while the, oh. Installing applications, shoot. Um, that's a problem. I didn't realize this had applications on it. I thought this was for a clean install. Well, obviously that's not going to work because this is not a Dell computer. So, that's a problem. Now that, that's actually a real problem. Because most Dell OEM CDs don't don't per, don't install applications. They only install um, they only install the OS. But I guess this one had applications on it. That's weird. Well, worst case scenario, what we can do is when this reboots, we'll just go ahead and remove the applications that are on there because none of them are going to work because this is an HP computer but yeah that's so weird because usually with Dell 
the applications are on a separate, in fact, you know, let me go through my box of CDs here and, yeah, yeah, application, there's an application CD, yeah, it's, it's on a separate disk, so why is it installing applications? Well, it's not going to work because this is not a Dell computer. And most of the, well, we'll see what applications it actually installs, but... Well, we'll let this go. We'll see what happens when, when it gets to the desktop. But, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm back. Um, the good thing is, Windows installed okay. I don't know what applications it was installing, but let me go into AppWiz here. Okay. There, oh, okay, so just just some basic... Okay. I had me a little worried there, because, you know, I was going to say, most. it's weird because most Dell OS recovery CDs are just the OS. They're not for... They don't have... They do not have the... Um, they do not have the um, drivers or anything like that. Okay, so we need to activate Windows. So to do this, first of all, we need to change the product key. So I'm going to turn the laptop over. I'm going to get myself a picture of the COA. I'm going to get a picture of the COA. And we're going to use this... Just go ahead and rotate this picture. There we go. Okay, so I've got the COA. So we can't do the internet because A, we don't, we're not connected to the internet, and B, we do not have... Um, actually, yes, yeah, so we need to go to change product key. Let me type in the new key. So I'll go ahead and just do that off camera. Well, it looks like it actually worked, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I am actually surprised. Let me just get that confirmation ID off screen, but yeah, there you go, and it's even telling me that XP is out of support, but who cares, right? We're not going to be using this as a, as a media, we're going to be using this as a media center laptop. Okay, we've successfully activated Windows. That is surprising. I, I thought for sure, because I guess the reason I was a little concerned is because Unlike with Vista and later, where the service pack, the keys service pack doesn't matter, with XP it does. And what I mean by that is, if you have an XP service pack 2 disk, you have to use a service pack 2 key. If you try a service pack 1, 2, 3, or RTM key, it will not activate. So, but with Vista, I think they, they patched that in Vista, so, you, if, if, so the service pack no longer matters. But yeah, in XP, you have to use the key that matches with the service pack and key have to match. Okay, that's great. We've got Windows successfully activated. So now that Windows is activated, let's go ahead and get some drivers on here. So the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to plug in my flash drive. And we're going to get Snappy Driver installer on here. So let's go to the C drive. If we can get to the C drive, there we go. Oh, and it created a Dell folder. Pfft. Well, we really don't need anything in there. I won't delete it, because who knows, it might be something important on there. But in any case, let's get, where is it? There it is, SDIO. Actually, let me just copy that entire folder. Control C, we'll go to our C drive. We'll make a new folder, we'll call it SDI, and we'll copy Snappy Driver over to the hard drive. Cool. So now, all we need to do is plug in the Ethernet cable, and we can get ourselves the drivers for this computer. So we'll go ahead and safely remove it. All right. I'll go ahead and disconnect the power, and we'll go ahead and get this computer moved over to its new home, and we'll start getting the drivers installed. So it's several hours later, and we've run into a problem. Of course, the recording got corrupted, but because it never fails with these videos. But basically, long story short, 
The video card in this laptop is no good because I'll boot. I'll, and yes, I am running off the battery right now. The battery does hold some charge, but does not hold a full charge, which is to be expected for a laptop of this age. But basically, the reason I'm in safe mode is because I'm going to attempt something because I'm going to attempt to roll back the, a driver for the uh, video card because what's going on is the video card driver is installed, but it's telling me the device cannot start. And because of that, we have no video driver, even in regular mode. So, I'm thinking, I, I did try some different drivers off camera, but no matter what I try, and yeah, it's just telling me I'm in safe mode, so. But, yeah, you can click, we can go into device manager here. Just type it here. .msc, yep, there we go. So I'll go ahead and go into device manager here. And if we go to, oh, now, of course, it's not showing it. Now, of course, it's not doing it. It's, but before, what if I right click, can I get properties for it now? Nope. Yeah, so basically, the system just freezes whenever I try to attempt to do anything with this device. And if I shut down, it just blue screens. Oh, my God. So, okay. But basically, Okay, yeah, it's not going to give details in safe mode, but the point, basically the idea is, and if I shut down, it's, it'll, it, it blue screens, the system will blue screen, so at least it does in regular mode. I don't know if it does it in safe mode, but we'll, we're about to find out. Let's see if we get the BSOD. Nope. Okay, so apparently it doesn't do it in safe mode, but basically I'll boot back up into regular mode now so you can see what the problem is and the battery apparently is too low for it to start so I have to plug it in. Like I said the battery does not hold a full charge on this laptop so, so if we boot back up into reg in regular mode still says the battery is too low. There we go. But you'll see what I mean when I when we boot into regular mode. Um, I'll go back into the device manager and pretty much anything I try, any, any attempt to fix the graphics card results in a BSOD. So I'm thinking what what it, I'm thinking what's going on is the video card is having issues. Uh, probably needs to be re-soldered to the motherboard and unfortunately I do not have the soldering I do not have soldering knowledge I have never done soldering work so and something just crashed but if we go back into device manager you can see that it's having problems so, clearly something is wrong with the video card. So, we're going to go ahead and just leave it at... So this will just be a parts machine. Let's see if it blue screens this time. Yep, see, that's because of the video card. So, the video card is no good, so we need to... So this laptop is basically now a parts machine. Anyways, that's the end of this, this series. We will come back and hopefully next month I'll have another video for you. So it looks like I was wrong. This actually had an IDE hard drive the entire time. No wonder Windows found the drivers for it. <laughs> yeah, basically the final verdict for this laptop as you probably saw in the previous clip, this is now a parts laptop because the video card is no good. So after all that trouble, I figured I'd just use this laptop for parts. But hey, a free IDE drive and it's 80 gigs, I'll take it. So, and it's a Fujitsu drive too. Anyways, this has been Drago, I mean Ben Kleinberg, signing off. For real this time. Take care.